Hello and welcome everybody to this Azure Synapse Espresso. I'm joined here today by Arthur, which means we're going to talk about dedicated SQL pools. Um, last video, we talked a bit about shuffle moves and data movement that is being incurred with those shuffle moves. And one of those things that is very, very important to choose when using a dedicated SQL pool is your distribution key. And that's what we'll talk about today. What is the distribution key and what are the best practices in choosing it? So basically choosing that distribution key in the right way will greatly improve the performance that you're having on your dedicated SQL pool. So first question, Arthur, what is the distribution key and, and how should you choose it? Okay, so uh, we've discussed in the previous one of our previous videos what were the table geometries and the alternatives that we had inside of Synapse to create different table structures. One of the tables that we discussed was a distributed table. So the data gets distributed across the storage of the synapse based on the value of a key that you choose to do that distribution. So what happens is, depending on the value, the system calculates a hash, and that hash determines where the record is going to be co-located. If this brings us to uh, some interesting aspects, like if we do a good choice, we, are, we can actually have a way that will allow us to distribute the data across the entire, the entire spaces in a very even way, which means that we, when we're going to read or write, we are actually dividing all the work across those 60 distributions that we have inside of Synapse, and we take advantage of all the, the, the distributed architecture and the performance and the power that we have on the I.O. And the, and the compute. If we do a bad choice, that's going to happen the opposite, it means that eventually we can have a situation where all of our data or most of our data is in one single distribution. So one place is doing all the work and the others are pretty much harder light or idle or, or doing nothing. So we have, we have a, a specific documentation on this subject. I'm going to share this and I'm going to share this soon with, uh, with you. And let's go and take a look at what's happening uh, on the process to choose a better, a good, a good distribution key. So let's take a look at what we want to have when we create a, a, a hash distributed key. The idea is we want to choose an attribute from our table, from our business uh, data that allows us to, that allows us to have the most evenly distribution of data across, across the entire space. If you see here, this is the number of distributions in the horizontal, and then you have the row count on the vertical. If you, if you, if you look at the chart, all the distributions have an approximate value, same number of records on, on every single one of them. This is what we want to have. This is our objective. This is going to help us to take the best advantage of the, the, the processing power of the, of the Synapse distributed architecture. Now, let's, let's see what happens if we choose a bad distribution key. This is the example. Same chart, but with a different distribution key. What we see here is that we have many distributions that have little, a small amount of data, and then you have a few others that have more data, and one of them actually has a huge amount of data, which means that these bar charts identify the amount of work that each distribution has to do to resolve to our requests. So this is the things that we need to look for. So I'm going to share the document that we that we have in the in the Synapse documentation and let's go through the process. Okay, so this is the this is the the, the web page on the Synapse documentation that that we have published. That is basically one stop to have all the information about distributed tables, how to use it and how to get the best out of these things. So the this URL is going to be in the video notes. So you just go there and uh, have a look, but let me show you a couple of things here. So this document is basically best practices and guidance for designing distributed tables in dedicated. We start by discussing what is a distributed table. We had a video uh, released before that explains the differences between dash distributed, round robin, all those things. You have the same summary here. And then you go into the sections that, that tells you how you choose the distribution key. On our previous video, when we talk about distribution columns, we, we presented how we created a distributed table. It's the same process. We use the create statement as we usually do. Then we declare the distribution. We say it's a hash 
to make sure it's distributed and then we declare the product the the attribute that we want to use for that distribution so like we, we discussed before we want to we want to have that evenly distribution of data across the distributions but if we make the wrong choices we're going to have that unevenly and unbalanced distribution that is called data skew we, that we've that we've that we've discussed in the in the slides too. So when we come to this document, you'll have a very clear insight of what is what and how to use it. Let's take a, a couple of notes on things that you want to use, things that you want to use on your distribution key. There are a few factors that are very important. The first one is as an attribute, a good distribution key candidate is an attribute that is highly distinct you have a lot of unique values on the on on your table which allows you to have a, a good variety of 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 uh, hash values for that collocation in the table the second one is does not have nulls or if it has it has very little amount of nulls one thing in, like i said before the distribution key uses a hash function that reads the value of the attribute calculates the hash key if you have a column that is a null, the hash value of null is going to place all the data on distribution number one, which is not what you want to have. You want to have things distributed across all distributions. So choosing a column that does not have nulls or has very little nulls, it's, it's a good approach. Other thing that is a common mistake is sometimes people choose the date as the distribution key because we are many of us are coming from experiences like sql server where we created the partitions to uh, in by date and here the the point is date if it is date time it's highly distinct it's a very it's a it's it's a highly distinct value so the records will be very well distributed across across distributions but if you have a date and if you use it as distribution key means that all the data from one day is going to be placed in the same distribution. So if you run, select something from table where my date, my operation date is this, only one of the distributions is going to work. That's a big data skew. It's not something that you want. So you should take a look at these small, these small, small details, but very important. The second one that we already discussed was about data movement. We want to choose a key that minimizes the data movement that's why we have distribution keys so if for example if you don't know what is going to be the best distribution key for you start by doing something simple like identifying how how are how are my users how's the business using this data what kind of queries you have there you're going to have information about how the tables are being joined which ones are the predicates that are being used which ones are the, the, group by, uh, the group by definitions for the query, all those things. So if you align that distribution key with the queries that your business is using, you're actually aligning the structures to the requests, which means that you minimize the data movement. But we can discuss these types of optimizations later. The idea is these two topics here, these two topics here will give you a very good approach to start choosing a good distribution key. Okay, how do you see if the distribution that distribution attribute that you chose was good or not? You do an analysis on the data skew. Okay, if we're talking about the data, if we're talking about the Azure Synapse, you have specific commands that allows you that will give you this information. For example, we have a DBCC command called DBCC PDW show space use that's going to give you the number of records of a given table per distribution. So if you have, if you have uh, the numbers, the numbers of the output, they are evenly, uh, they are even or close to close together in all distributions, it's going to be much easier for you to, to identify this. If you have columns that have zero and the other columns that have billions, then yeah, you do have a lot of data skew. There is another way for you to do this, which is querying the DMVs. So there is a, a, there is this view called V table sizes that's in, in documentation here. If you go to this, if you go to this uh, to this page, you're going to see this document here, and this is going to give you the schema for this this uh, this object here. 
This is a set of DMV queries, dynamic management view queries that you can do in, in, uh, against Synapse that will give you internal information about the objects. You can use this. There's a, a set, a library of queries that you can use with this, with this view that depending on how you group or how you filter or how you aggregate, you're going to see that you're going to get different types of information. You can give you data skew, you're going to give row counts, you're going to give table sizes, going to be, give you a lot of information. So the idea is you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Everything is here. You just copy this, put it in your library, use it because it's going to give you, give you a lot of, a lot of goods insights. One of the things that we're going to check in more detail is the data movement It's going to be the shuffles. We're going to discuss this with more in more detail in the, one of our next videos. Awesome. This basically means that uh, choosing your distribution key will uh, greatly enhance your performance. There's two main rules of thumb, so make sure that the data is evenly spread, but do not use a date column. And um, also um, choose that distribution key to avoid data shells. So avoid shuffling that data and moving that data around. Now, uh, if you liked the video, uh, give us a thumbs up. If this is the first time you're visiting our channel and you like the content, you want to see more of it, subscribe to the channel. We'll have regular videos coming in. And if you have any questions, just write them in the comments and we'll definitely get back to you. As always, from the Azure Sinus Espresso team, this is Stan. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.